Hello and welcome to the next video. Today we're going to be discussing multiples of 8 and how that is really important to modeling, topology, and just the whole uh, articulation theory in general. And not just for organic modeling, but for hard surface modeling too. And what I mean by multiples of 8, just think of the concentric circles that go around surfaces that are extruded inside. Multiples of 8 will kind of save you a lot of heartache in the long run. So what I mean by that is 8 can uh, be, you know, times 2 into 16, can be doubled into 32, could be doubled into 64, and then eventually 128 and so forth. I marked this in uh, red because this is just too much. And these guys are kind of high, and these guys are kind of reasonable. So, but sometimes you do need 32, and sometimes you definitely could use 64 in some spots if it's just crazy and you really need it, but most people aren't going to go above this. Let's just be re real here. Anyway, let's look at a real example of what I mean by that. Here we have a nice uh, just simple cylinder with eight loops around itself. If I go ahead and uh, just move that along here and smooth it, this will just become 16 around. If I subdivide it again and uh, we get 32, and we should get 64 if I do it one last time. That's a lot of resolution. Most things and aren't going to need that much resolution if um, you turn this off. You can kind of see the next step down just does the job. We don't really need too much here. If it was crazy detailed, sure, we could definitely use something like that. But let's move that aside and kind of use an example of how we can kind of connect those together and create a contiguous kind of mesh. So if you look here, we have the same setup here, 8, 16, and 32, but they're all connected to each other. I used these kind of cancellations here to kind of connect everything. And you might notice these. A lot of people use these to uh, work on a mesh. If you go to topologyguides.com, it kind of explains, I use the 4 to 2 because it's just doubled. But you can use any one of these you want depending on the scenario you need it in. But in a perfect world, uh, look how easily everything keeps quads goes from 8 to 16 to 32. Now obviously, I did this a very crude way. I didn't smooth anything out. So you're going to get a very weird looking artifact kind of crazy mesh here. So. You know, uh, if you put poles too close to each other, and we will talk about poles in a, another lesson, that kind of needs a whole lesson in on itself, why poles are important, when to use them, how to use them, things like that, but that's not what the focus of this lesson is. Okay, but as a little takeaway from that, when poles are just too close to each other, if you have pole after pole after pole, you can kind of see how that gets a little lumpy and it looks bad. But still, my point, regardless of that, you can fit a low res and you can slowly transition into you know higher res. And you can keep this going. You can go all the way crazy. So again, not super practical for this instance, but uh, it kind of gives you an idea of when you could need that subdivision in spots in the body in a hard surface where you need more details things like that these cleanly fit into each other with quads so if you can keep everything clean now um, let's we have two exact meshes here another example we have 4 8 16 and then 24 and 32 and i wanted to kind of kind of end cap these a little differently Instead of doing the divisions of 8, I did 4 for parts of these to see how they fit into 8. Sometimes you're just going to need divisions of 4 to go into things, but that's going to change the math. It's going to change the way you cancel things out. And there are different ways to do it. So for here, we have some quads, but in order to cancel some of these out, I had to use triangles. That's just the nature of it. Now there are ways to sort of run things a little differently. You can use four to twos a little bit and kind of get more uh, quads out of this. But to do it on one loop, I just wanted to make a crude example. And uh, the the sixteen, the eight and the sixteen, just again neatly fits into those four to twos. But again, the twenty-four to sixteen 
is just all um, basically triangles versus the 32 to 16 neatly fits all into quads. So just keep that in mind. You will have to do some wizardry. Sometimes you need loops to going down, so you may be able to neatly fit, um, cancel these out. It just depends, but yes, uh, there is eight loops that go from 16 to 24, so you can take away eight instead of four to eight, which is just four loops. So there are ways to get rid of things. You just have to be clever about it. I just wanted to get that point across. Uh, if we had to kind of run these down, if I go ahead and smooth these and turn off wireframe unshaded, you can't really tell what's going on. There's no artifacting because everything is nice and flat. So I'll bring a uh, another example here. Since everybody's asking about hands, I thought this is kind of the reason why I wanted to get into this lesson is because this is the methodology I want you to start paying attention to because everyone has an issue with hands. Hands specifically are a bit of an issue because they're, they're a bunch of fingers, extremities, having to attach into one object and then having attached to a larger mass. You're going to have to cancel stuff out, but we can mitigate that cancellation out, potentially actually getting rid of uh, the entire need of having almost any cancellations if we're really clever about the way we do uh, this math. So all of these fingers, let's say here, if we go into wireframe unshaded, they're all eight around. Okay? They're all eight around. And our um, palm area is 16 around. So we have that there. Now if these guys get subdivided, which is going to happen, now we have 32 and each of these fingers is going to be 16. Plenty of detail to work with if we needed that. That's plenty. And they all, you know, they're all going to fit into each other. Now the thumb, we're going to have to kind of talk about that in the hand lesson, but it's going to be the same concept. It's going to have to be a division of eight for everything to kind of work nicely together. But just keep that in mind. Think of all these things as interlocking pieces together. So we have our uh, group of 8, our group of 16, um, our group of 32, our group of 64 at the highest. And just think of them all as fitting neatly into each other as interlocking pieces. And you will have a way, way easier time modeling and setting edge flow and things like that. Sorry this isn't a lesson that is kind of showing you more of a robust thing but I felt this part was so necessary to modeling hands. It was so important that I had to make a specific video on it for you to kind of get your, uh, your palette wet for what's to come because it's just too important to kind of just say in one sentence. I really wanted to kind of hit this point home and kind of beat you over the head with it a little bit. Try it out for yourself. Go ahead and start modeling something and keep this division of multiples of eight in mind and you'll quickly see how easier things fit into each other and keep in mind this is not a new concept um, since poly modeling has been around since the its inception this rule has existed it's just sort of been kind of forgotten maybe people just do this and i don't know but i kind of want to uh, let people who are new to uh, 3d really kind of um, understand this from the get-go and they'll have way less problems down the road. And I'll just go ahead and just show you how this all steps down into each other. Okay. Anyway, uh, good luck. And uh, let me know if you have any questions down below. Take care.